Sorry we're meeting like this. My name is Barry Goodman, and I'm a uh, founding member and partner of Goodman Acker. We're a proud member of the Jewish community. This morning, as anyone can see, our office was vandalized in a clear attempt to intimidate and spread fear among our team, our employees, other tenants, the community. This was not an attack on our office, but an attack on our values and our mission. Goodman Acker is owned by Muslims, Christians, and Jewish members, Jewish lawyers, and we proudly serve all faiths, all races, and have been doing so for over 30 years. In that light, um, I'm not using four-letter words to describe what's going on here. But this is absolutely ridiculous. This is a crime. They can make statements. They can protest in front of the building and walk down the sidewalk. They can have their signs. They can do everything that the Constitution allows. But they can't do this. And we surely hope that they are caught and they are penalized to the greatest extent under the law. We all are here, and everyone here is following the law. It doesn't seem to be followed by those that did this in the middle of the night under the cloak of darkness and ran away because they didn't want to get caught and take credit for doing this stupidity. So in that regard, I'd like to uh, introduce our state senator, Jerry Moss, uh, has been around and helped this community for so long that um, he probably started when he was still in elementary school. But Jeremy, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barry. I'm Jeremy Moss, uh, state senator for District 7, which includes Southfield. I'm also the only Jewish member of the Michigan Senate. Uh, and I want to lead off by saying what is obvious. We all want the framework of a ceasefire to succeed. This does not achieve that. There are horrible, ongoing conflicts and tragedies all over the world that deserve our attention, and the war against Hamas is no exception. But what makes it the exception is the obsessive focus on Israel alone that has led to incitement of harassment, threats, and now vandalism against Jews anywhere. Many of us have sounded the early alarms about what's going on at our campuses. We believe the protesters who tell Jews to go back to Poland. We believe the protesters who want to globalize an intifada right here. We believe the protesters who say all Zionists deserve to die. And when 90% of Jewish Americans support Israel's right to exist as a Jewish homeland, all of us are vulnerable to these public acts of hate for how we express our Judaism. This is anti-Semitism. These alarms are now blaring. Those who have watched in disgust have these scenes, as these scenes have played out, but have no longer found the words yet to condemn it, must join us in speaking out. These threats no longer just impacting student encampments now impact Jewish homes, Jewish neighborhoods, and Jewish businesses. But what the anti-Semitic vandals might not know is how strong the Southfield community is and how we value our racial, religious, and ethnic diversity. And this showing of our officials and community members from our mayor and council members, county commissioners, state representative, state representative and, and uh, our uh, public safety enforcement demonstrates that hate will have no home here. And with that, I want to introduce our mayor, Ken Siver, uh, to deliver a few remarks. Thank you, Jeremy. Good afternoon. Uh, Plain and simple, this is an act of terrorism. We will not tolerate this kind of cowardice done in the middle of the night in our community. This firm, Goodman Acker, has been serving Southfield for years. It's a, a wonderful uh, law firm with a uh, uh, social conscience. Um, this is un. Uh, forgivable what's happened here. We stand with our community 
particularly our, our Jewish community, uh, against this sort of violence, this kind of terrorism, this is not acceptable. In working with our police department, our chief is here, uh, we will investigate this to the fullest, and our intention is to bring these people to justice. Again, this is not acceptable. And I say this on behalf of the city council members that are here with me. Last uh, November, uh, our council and, and myself uh, did a resolution decrying uh, terrorism of any sort. And this is has no place here or anywhere. So uh, again, I can't say it emphatically enough. We stand with our community and in particular, Goodman Acker. Um, please, Elvin Barron. And thank you, Mayor, and I certainly thank the media uh, for being here to help us get this word out as we investigate this horrific uh, incident. Uh, Southfield Police Department is committed to bringing those responsible accountable. We'll be working with the FBI, uh, the University of Michigan Police, and also Huntington Woods Police to resolve this issue. Uh, Southfield Police did respond uh, to this location at approximately 8.15 a.m. at the cause of the vandalism came into our office. The preliminary investigation revealed that on Monday, June 3rd, at 1.39 a.m., four individuals were captured on surveillance video approaching from the east side of this building. One acted as a lookout while the other three performed the vandalizing. Uh, what we know is that uh, these individuals at this time, uh, again, walked from the east side of the building. So we not only collected video evidence from Goodman Actor facility, we also collected video evidence from across this entire area uh, to determine uh, additional suspects, vehicles, license plates, etc. So we are asking the community, uh, if you see something, say something. When I looked at the video this morning, I did see uh, numerous cars riding by this location. And so maybe someone uh, saw something that we could use to further our investigation. So at this time, I turn it back over to Mr. Ackerman. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jordan Acker. Uh, uh, you want me to spell that for you? J-O-R-D-A-N-A-C-K-E-R. -E I'm a partner here at Goodman Acker and I also serve as a regent of the University of Michigan. This is an enormously difficult moment for me personally and for this entire community. Make no mistake that targeting individual Jewish elected officials is anti-Semitism. This has nothing to do with Palestine or the war in Gaza or anything else. This is done as a message to scare Jews. I am deeply grateful for all of the support I've received from across the political spectrum today, from my friends in the Arab American community, from all walks of life, Democrats, Republicans. Thank you all for being here today to my colleagues on the Board of Regents. I really appreciate it. I've always felt deeply American. And part of the reason why is because my family story is so deeply American. My great grandparents came to this country, worked for Ford Motor Company. My grandfather served our country in Korea, came home, went to school at Wayne State, and worked nights to make it happen, spending his entire career having one client, and it was selling Chevys. This feels like an attack on my Americanness. It is not acceptable. It is not okay. My dad helped found this business, and for 30 plus years, we've worked to help Michiganders regardless of their race, religion, or creed. Remember, this is a business that is owned by Jews, by Muslims, and by Christians. This is an attack on who we are as a Michigan community. Again, I want to recall this and just be clear. This action is the exact type of action that occurred on Jewish businesses in Germany and in Russia and in other countries where, with severe anti-Semitism problems. Before this becomes a problem that we can't help, we must stamp it out now. I was not targeted here today because I am a regent. I am targeted for this because I am Jewish. This neighborhood is Jewish. And because some people, under the pretext 
of helping Palestinians feel the obligation to single out Jews, especially liberal ones, for an attack. It is unacceptable, it is un-American, and it must stop now. And with that, um, I think we can take a few questions. Chief General, if you want to step that up. One thing I do want to say, when we talk about the community, this community stands tall, thanks to those like the mayor, Jeremy, the council members, all the, 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 the police. We, I have fielded not one or two, but six to 10 calls from Jewish and non-Jewish contractors out in the community that are coming here at three, four o'clock in the afternoon today to power wash for free the building because they stand with us and with the Jewish community and they want to make sure that this is taken care of and that those who did this understand it's temporary. We're fixing it. They'll continue to be criminals. We'll continue to do our work. Thank you all. And before we, before we open the floor for questions, yeah. I do want to add, uh, again, the suspects arrived at 1.39 a.m. and they departed at 1.46 a.m. So they're here on scene for approximately seven minutes. Thank you. Are you going to release the video? Yes. Okay. This is the second incident. This is a significant escalation. Now, just to be clear, going to my colleagues' homes, all of us, is unacceptable and dangerous. But singling out a Jewish board member is anti Semitism, pure and simple. And I would say that anyone out there, whether where you ever you are on this conflict should call it out as such. Targeting individual Jews is anti-Semitism. Period. What do you say to their, um, their demand? Uh, the There is no room for criminal behavior in the political process. In this state, regents are elected by the people of the state of Michigan. If you disagree with them, you could come to a board meeting. We have nine meetings a year. If you disagree even more, you can vote, vote us out. That's how the American system works. The, the problem here is, is that the encampment, the group of the, that came to, they did not show up to our board meeting. They did not come to redress their grievances. This is not political activity. This is criminal activity. And whoever uh, did this should be held responsible by law enforcement. Wait, you said they didn't come to the Board of Regents meeting? Correct. Uh, you agree with Barry that it would be fine if the protesters want to come and protest on the sidewalk? I think that that is your First Amendment right to, pro to protest on public property. Absolutely. But not, but not in the University of Michigan diet. I, I, I have no issue with going to the University of Michigan Diag. What I do have a problem with is, you, is, is public space that's uh, for everyone and not one specific group has exclusive rights to that. So yes, that would be the difference. There are lots of groups that protest in the Diag and should. That's what it's there for. But you can't monopol monopolize it and break campus rules. I don't know. You know, I, I'd have to leave that up for for uh, for law enforcement to, to answer that is that question. Is a hate crime? Yes. Is the, uh, police have a so right now, the Southfield Police Department, the FBI, University of Michigan, and Huntington Woods Police Departments, but it could expand to other agencies as well. Was there any action taken at any of these homes? Today? today? No, this is the only incident today. Okay, any of the physical cases. I don't believe so. No, no, just here. If I could ask you this question. Um, when, you, you know, when you see this happening after colleagues uh, and another chief did this, do you also see this as an escalation? Oh, most definitely. This is a dangerous escalation. Uh, and, you know, Jordan is a dear friend. Our firms have worked with each other uh, for decades. Um, but this is a terrible, dangerous escalation. Um, it's intolerable. It's repugnant. It demands condemnation. Um, the silence around this uh, it may, is, is, is uh, completely unacceptable if it exists.
Um, and so I'm here to show support and solidarity for a friend, for a colleague, and for, my com and for a community that doesn't deserve this. And one of the questions, I don't know all you heard, was this being investigated or is this being investigated as a hate crime? The answer to that is yes. Uh, we are investigating this as a hate crime. What specifically would make it a hate crime? Uh, the manner of, I mean, look at for yourself. Yeah, I think everything that we said here today demonstrates that this is not necessarily a protest of what's going on uh, in a conflict. This has escalated to incitement of Jews who express their Judaism by expressing support for a Jewish homeland. This is not, this is, nobody, nowhere does it say anything other than uh, what is attacking a Jewish member of a, of a board of regents that has uh, done everything he can to kind of mediate with the students and still we're seeing so much uh, hatred and vitriol surrounding that. So the investigation will reveal who was responsible for this. So we're not going to speculate at this time who may have done this. Once the information comes in, once we complete our investigation, then we'll determine uh, the identity of the suspect. Oh, I think they will listen to warnings, actually. I think that there are people out there, leaders in this community, leaders in this state, who have an opportunity to say, this is too far and this is not acceptable. You hear from these people privately, I'd like to hear from them publicly. I love them to say, this kind of hate action is not acceptable. Targeting of individual Jews is not acceptable, period. But the people who actually did this, do you think they could continue I, I can't speculate on the behavior of criminals. But what, what more has to happen? I mean, following up on your question, what more has to happen? What, what other Jewish institutions, businesses, people have to be targeted before those of us in the Jewish community express that we feel this is a threat in how we express our Judaism and not dealing with the conflict 4,000 miles away? And that is what we have been sounding this early alarm on, is that we as Jewish members, both in public and private life, have been crying out that we feel this is anti-Semitism. And somehow we have to be word policed by others on what feels to us as anti-Semitism. This should be enough that we come out and say, we feel targeted here. Uh, and again, this is a Jewish uh, segment of our, of, our, of our city, and it's happened right here on 10 Mile. What happens when it happens a block further back, and a block further back, and a block further back, that someone paints uh, this on a private home? Don't you think that that individual Jewish family would feel terrorized by that? But, it, but I mean, forgive me, but this isn't happening. I mean, this, this happened at a multicultural law school. Like, uh, they didn't know that. The this is, the look what it says right here on the ground Wait, right on. here. What, read what it says right here. No, I'm, I'm just not, I mean, yes, I, I, I see that. But I'm just saying, this didn't, you know, the message clearly is regarding the defense not moving. And whether or not, whether or not, whether or not, you know, I, like, I, I, I don't want to, I don't need to take the specifics because I, I don't care. But, well, I care though, I care. And wait, 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 hang on one second. I care, because here's the answer to your question. When you show up at only one region's house, and it is a Jewish region, and when you show up at someone's business, and only, excuse me, I'm finishing, only a Jewish region, you are sending a message that it is okay to terrorize Jews, and it is not okay. And, and on top of that, and I don't want to get into back and forth either, no. but on top of that, when we have seen this rhetoric, there are protesters who are exercising their First Amendment protected right. But when you see it lead to incitement, when you see encampments have these uh, uh, signs and other things that target not just people who are supporting Israel, but Jews in mass, when you see chants like, uh, you know, go back to Poland, or, you know, all Zionists should die, and if you're an American Jew who supports Israel as a Jewish homeland, that's not about the conflict in Gaza. That's about expressing your Judaism. And here, that is a very clear demonstration that this is targeting people in the Jewish community who have a desire to see a Jewish homeland exist, and this is not uh, anything to do with the political discourse uh, on a war. This is targeting Jews for how they express their Judaism.